Hello and welcome to the first open tutorial at studentsplanet.net. In this tutorial, I will be giving a brief overview of different features that open provides to its users. One of the reasons of its popularity is the ease of use and the nice graphical user interface that it provides and support for a large variety of network communication technologies. You can find almost virtually all sort of network equipment and the models in OpNet. In OpNet you can desi design large size networks and small size networks. You can design your own protocols and develop your whole communication model right from scratch. Like for example here you can see a large size WLAN or Wi-Fi network. This is from one of the example scenarios that you would find in OpNet. It consists of several nodes, um, different routers, and they are connected all through wireless interface and they are configured to have different mobility profiles so that node can move around during the simulation and then they are connected through word interfaces. Output provides a hierarchical view to all of its mm, designs and the models for the real life mobile stations and communication equipment. Like for example, if I open this mobile station, it will bring me to the node model view. In the node model, you can see different modules. All of the modules are then connected by packet streams, or you can call them frame streams. It depends on which layer you are uh, talking about. So in here, you can see a station model with the help of different modules. This module is supposed to generate packet. This is called source. And then we have got the wireless name MAC interface and the wireless name. Now, this is the second level after the actual station. It's called load level. And now if I click on it, it takes me further down to another level called process model. Inside the process model, you would see a state transition diagram consist consisting of different states. You can see wet states. And in some later, like for example, in this one, you would see the green states as well. I'll show you the difference between why do we need to have different sort of states and what is the purpose of each one of them. Using the state transition diagram, we can model the functionality of a particular protocol, which essentially means that this is a flow of data or the way the protocol would then work. Once it receives a packet, how would it handle with a certain situation? So every situation is, or every event is programmed through this state transition diagram. And then each, inside each one of these state states, you would find C-like code, which handles the whole functionality. Similarly, you would find header blocks, which supports the, the Includes in all the, the functions or variables that you want to declare. Similarly, you can actually declare state variables here and do a lot more. I'll show you later on about all of these features in the later tutorials. So, in a nutshell, you can design your own protocol by using a certain state transition diagram that could be called a process model. Then, a process model can be integrated with other process models inside a node and that would actually simulate the functionality of a particular protocol running in a communication station. And as I said, if you don't need to use your own specific protocol or changes in the current protocols unless you're not working as some research project, most of the functionalities you would already find it here they are implemented and you will find them under the model family. So all you need to do is to configure the network using one of these models from the object palette. Now let me show you the first steps of starting your own project in OpNet and then configure different simulation scenarios. So from the file menu you would go to new and from here you can select different other options. You can open a new process model, you can open a new node model, link model, path, and demand model, and so many other options. But for now, you will just select a new project. Open it would then ask me for the project name. I would for uh, enter it 
you. To choose one and leave the scenario as scenario one. The next step open allows me for what kind of scenario I need. I'll just go for empty scenario. Then I select the size of the network. Then I select the X pane and Y pane. You can select the meters and degrees, kilometers, feet, miles, whatever. So for now, I'll just select meters, 100 by 100 size network. And then in this bit, Apple will ask you about the model families that you want to include just to avoid the confusion later on in selecting some of the models. So for now, I'll just go for wireless LAN. You can find several other families. It depends on where you uh, which family you would need to work on in your simulation. So for now, I just go and select the wireless line. So in my object palette, it will only show me WLAN. In this step, Opera will just summarize all the information that you have selected in the previous steps. So you can have a view or review, and if you're not happy with it, you can go and change it again. So I'll go and hit the finish button. <coughs> now here you see a new project and my object palette. This object palette displays only the WLAN models, the node models in WLAN model family. So it has actually made it easy for me only to select models from this family. I can change the view and make it like this. From the object palette we can simply drag and drop the nodes and then later on configure them. So these are different options which you can use and to configure your network and to configure a particular node. We would come to each one of these options in the later tutorials. Now for the later part of this tutorial, I'll explain a little bit about how to get help if you're stuck while working in OpNet. So one of the best resources to get help is the OpNet documentation which is for documentation. You can find a lot more about where to find the library functions, how to use them, and you can also find some helpful tutorials in different PDF files. And if you want to ask a specific question about the simulator itself, you can always go to the Opnet Support Center and you can check the online FAQs. So let's go to the Opnet Support Center. In here, you would find a lot of information, but usually you would need to have your own username and password. You can register your technical support cases by clicking on the technical support. And then you create a new technical support case, or you can edit or browse different cases which you previously registered. And the support team of OpenNet, they would get back to you usually in about 24 hours. Sometimes they are helpful, but most of the time they would not be that helpful. Well, this is just my personal view and my personal experience. I think this is all for the first tutorial. You can check for the detailed information later on in other tutorials. I will be following a step-by-step -step approach, but from configuring very simple networks, simple wireless networks, and then going into the detail of traffic configuration, mobility patterns, and later on we will be going into how you can design your own protocols using process models, and uh, a little introduction to some of the library functions, which will be quite useful while using the process model. So visit our website at studentsplanet.net and you'll find a lot more information about OpNet, NS2, HFSS software, and J2ME. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.